What is the psychology behind creating fierce sexual attraction? What sustains passion and aliveness in the long haul? I'm going to teach you what it takes to create that sexual attraction through a personal dating story where a man was trying to decide why was it that I created so much sexual tension between us and yet there was another person he was dating at the same time where there was emotional attraction but yet there wasn't sexual tension. And I ended up explaining to him how it is that I was able to create that polarity and the other person wasn't. Hi, I'm Emily Liu. I help you climax in love. What that means is that I help you create depth on all dimensions in your romantic partnerships, not only spiritually, but intellectually, emotionally, and physically. I am the author of Climax, Why Great Leaders Need Love Affairs. This is a fictional leadership story of two characters who are in a romance and you will learn the deep psychology of why relationships get challenging and what it is that you need to do so that you could live a thriving and passionate romantic partnership. You have to know the root causes of relationship challenges, otherwise it's very difficult to solve the problems and achieve epic intimacy. So you're going to want to stay until the end of the video because you are going to be hearing the real voice note, the raw voice note I left this man that created this great attraction. And you're going to have some action steps towards the end of the videos on what you can do as a man or if you're a woman, what it is that you need to do as a woman in order to just maintain the polarity and the sexual tension and attraction for the long haul. So let's get right into the content. I was uh, dating this particular person. Let's call him Steve. Steve and I had uh, one long Zoom date for our first date. It was uh, three hours and it was pretty lively. And then we went on to a first, second and third in-person date. It was after the third date that things started to get intense and I had a lot of parts inside of me that got activated voices that started to tell me yes, no, maybe. So there was a lot of confusion in my part. At the same time, this person, Steve, also revealed that he had uh, started dating someone else and uh, he's just evaluating who it is that may seem right to go into a long-term partnership with. So this was happening at the same time that he was dating me. And dating in and of itself, it's, it's not monogamy yet until you figure out who you want to go into a long-term relationship with. So I wasn't triggered or anything. I was just being me. And, and if it's meant to be, it was going to happen with Steve. So I let him, you know, date this other person. And, and what's interesting was he started to reveal some of the things this other person did that were like just a little bit of a turnoff. And he's asking me why he's feeling this way, even though an emotional connection was established between he and this other gal. And he says, I don't get it. I really like her. She's attractive. And, and we've gotten close o over the phone and Zoom dates and, and just um, meeting for a walk. And I don't understand how, how you and I, Emily, are also getting close, but yet I'm feeling this real pull towards you as opposed to her. I can't figure, figure this out. So what I had uh, analyzed and, and uh, figured out for him was I was very direct in sharing my feelings with him. So was she. She was very direct in the way she communicated with him. However, there was a difference. The difference was she communicated her directness and her transparency through masculine energy. Whereas I communicated my radical truth from feminine energy. And that is why he felt so much more of a pull towards me than towards this other person. So this other person, let's call her Jane. So Jane is a very accomplished professional. She is used to directing people, directing her clients with pointed questions and leading the way. That is the masculine side of her energy. All of us have masculine and feminine energies within. The masculine is the doing and the direction and accomplishing things. 
And then the feminine is the flowy, the surrender, and just being. It's, it's the emotions, it's the softness. So all men and women have both masculine side to them and a feminine side. A lot of women are very much in their masculine during work because they have to accomplish things. So this woman was very accomplished in her field. As she and Steve got to know each other and, and they interviewed each other, because dating is essentially a, an interview for, for life partnership uh, for most people, she was like, really being direct with her questions and her answers as if she were interviewing her clients. Even in some of the things she said of how she would dress on a flirty date just wasn't really the biggest turn on for Steve. She said something like, you know, I would love to dress in a skirt and tights and put on my, my you know, really comfortable hiking boots or my Doc Martens or my combat boots. And he's just like, huh, you're an attractive woman, but you're gonna put on like really masculine type of shoes for, for me to look at? So, so and in her directness and in her sharing the information of what she would wear on a flirtier date where they were out in a nice place, you know, post COVID, it, it just didn't, just like didn't spark that attraction, even though he was feeling a, a nice friendship developing between them, but he wasn't feeling the physical pull towards her. So I said, it's because she's in masculine energy and, and you're in masculine energy as an alpha male who has accomplished a lot. So if you identify as a masculine essence guy, you want femininity and flowiness and vulnerability and emotions to be shown, especially emotions cracked from the heart to share her truth as opposed to her being very direct and, and sharing feelings through the head. And he said, you're right, Emily. That's why I am not as attracted to her in the way I am attracted to you. So what really tipped the scale with my connection with Steve was that after the third date, which was, you know, pretty, pretty intense and, and just, just, um, a, a lot of energy had exchanged between us, uh, emotionally and, uh, and we had shared a lot with each other. He started to share just the fact that he was so bowled over by me and that he wanted more. He wanted uh, to move towards commitment and I wasn't really there. He was uh, doing this flirting through text uh, after, the, uh, after the third date and, and, and then my, my parts, my inner voices started to freak out. So what I did was I uh, sent him a voice note via WhatsApp. When I wanna share vulnerable things, I do not do it over text because you cannot feel the nonverbal and the expressions of someone when you're texting something. As you know, a text exchange can be misconstrued, especially when it comes to vulnerable feelings and thoughts. So I left him a nine minute voice note. And right, right now, what I'm gonna do is share a condensed version of that voice note with identifying details left out. So it's been condensed to less than three minutes. And please listen to how I share the information through my parts and my heart and my vulnerabilities and how I share these vulnerabilities through an energy from my heart and not from my head. So I'm gonna have you listen to this and then I'll come back and dissect what happened. Hey, you know, there's a part of me that um, feels really guilty that I'm not able to participate at the 50 yard line with you. I know that um, you have this part that wishes that we were together right now and if I didn't have parts that were holding me back from just diving fully right in, you know, I would definitely be there with that kind of flirtatious exchange. And I'm really trying to come to terms with my perfectionist part has like certain things it wants and some of the men prior to you that I wanted didn't want me and that I was in that other place of looking at carnal reasons 
of why I wanted some of these men. And I knew in my heart of hearts, their lack of doing great therapy would be a limiting factor in whether or not they could, they could feel secure enough to be with someone who's really cracked open and not afraid to share all parts of her. And here yet, you know, I meet somebody who is so sovereign and my um, perfectionist part, they just like took over. And I just don't know why it has me in this state of protection. Some of it is uh, trying to project out into the future of what's important to me that may not be in alignment with the core of who you are. There are soul qualities I need, and then there's also other, other things I need in order to keep attraction alive forever. Yeah, so, so it's, it's I'm judging my perfectionist part. I'm judging the parts of me that are holding me back. And as we have said, you know, this is, it was a beautiful, most intense experience that both of us have ever experienced. How did that really happen? I mean, I know how it happened. It's, it's because I felt the safety with you. I felt your heart and your vulnerabilities. So it just has me in this state of confusion. And I sense that you really want to explore long-term relationship, which I totally get. So I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> like what these other men did in pulling back from me. And, and I don't know what the meaning is with all of this. And that's why, you know, I just want to share my vulnerable, honest feelings of where, like, my parts. And, you know, there's several other things um, that I also have to consider. And so, anyhow, I, I just wanted to vulnerably share where, what I'm feeling. And, and, yes, I do have this guilty part. That's like, oh gosh, I, I wish I could be right there to like do the flir flirtatious dance. It wants to, but yet it just doesn't want to right now get his hopes up to a degree where he wants to jump all in and then I'm not there. And, and the last thing I want to do is create heartbreak because I know it's really painful to feel that. And I've certainly felt that way too many times to want to inflict that, that on another human being. I just can't. It's just my very empathetic and sympathetic part that is just fully aware of what's going on and not wanting to hurt someone. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll stay in the present moment and I'll just, I'll just stop analyzing because whenever the universe has a mind of how things should unfold, it will happen organically. So I have to remain in uncertainty and that's really the only way to go for me right now and and yes i want to continue the connection i i welcome your texts i welcome the communication so that's where i'm at thanks for listening i hope you learned a lot from listening to the voice note especially if you are a woman if you noticed i shared my raw truth from the deepest place in my heart I held nothing back. Those are the voices that I would actually be sharing with a girlfriend of, you know what, this is what's coming up for me because of this happened in the, in, in the last relationship. I don't want this to happen. So I didn't hold anything back. I wanted Steve to know everything I was feeling towards our budding relationship. And so because I shared from that cracked open heart without rehearsing what I was going to say, it really brought him to another level of connection towards me. It polarized the situation because I was deeply in feminine energy and sharing my vulnerabilities. Men want to see a cracked open heart from a woman. That is femininity. That is feminine energy. That is where, where a real man just wants to contain that femininity and just hold her and just say, I've got you. When Steve listened to that note, he was very moved. He listened to it several times and took notes and he heard where I was at. And that created the tension and the polarity between us where I was a fully cracked, open, feminine being. 
and he was in that masculine consciousness of holding space for me. The reason why he was able to hold so much space for me was because he had been through many years of internal family systems therapy. He has a great therapist, and this internal family systems model is what I'm uh, trained in. And it's so like beautiful how the universe brought me this sovereign warrior who's so accomplished, uh, it, it, who has done the work and continues to do the work and, and, and just talk about his parts and, and these different voices. Because he understood the, the model of where we all have these different sub-personalities within us, these parts that have opposing voices, a part wants the relationship, and then a part is afraid and doesn't want the relationship, a part uh, judges uh, the person. It's, it's, it's hard to judge someone when they are speaking so vulnerably from that heart-led place of these voices that is just confusing them. And so if you notice in the voice note, I was externalizing these, these parts of me, these voices, and speaking for the part. There's a part of me that, that is just really afraid to go into this. There's a part of me that's judging you. There's a part of me that judges the part of me that is judging you. So it's, it's such raw vulnerability. And, and it's really accepting the fact that we all have these kinds of judgmental voices. The secret to sharing these voices is really ha about how you do it. If you want to know how, how to do it and how to speak for the most vulnerable parts of you, I invite you to read Climax, Why Great Leaders Need Love Affairs. This book goes into the psychology of understanding your parts and these sub-personalities that help you make decisions. And you have to honor all of these parts with different voices in order to move forward in your life. And you also have to honor these voices and share them if you want deep, epic intimacy. This is what intimacy is built on, is sharing the most vulnerable parts of us, especially those parts of us that judge another person. So what happened after I shared that voice note? He was so moved, he says, can we get on Zoom and talk about what you said? And we did. We ended up having a two hour Zoom call to process my confused voices, and it, it just brought our connection to a whole nother level. It increased the intimacy between us, it increased the polarity between us, and it increased that like phenomenal erotic tension between us. Because I felt safe to be all of me. I felt safe to express anything and everything um, that came up and that will come up. So he is a man who has done the work who is able to hold the space for whatever it is I want to say. So that is the secret to creating the sexual attraction for the, the long term. That means that if you are a woman, and most women are identified as feminine essence, which means that you want to just surrender into the lead of your man. Women, are seeking great conscious masculine leadership. They want a man who's got a plan, who's got direction, not only for his mission, but for their relationship. And a woman has to be able to share all of these different voices inside of her in order to evoke a man's consciousness to say, wow, I've got you. And a woman has to know how to share her desires with her man in order for him to understand how he needs to lead her. So here's the homework. If you are a man, I invite you to inspire your woman to share her deepest thoughts and feelings. You may say to her, you know, I would love to know what you're thinking and feeling right now. I just want to know what's in that cracked open heart of yours. What are you feeling about our relationship? How can I show up better for you? How can I make you happy? So men, that's masculine leadership. That's making her feel safe to share from the deepest parts of her heart. And ladies, you have to ask your man, would it be okay if I share what I'm thinking and feeling right now? I don't need you to fix anything. I just want to be heard. 
So you have to give this direction to a man that you don't need him to fix, you just want him to hear you. A man's inclination is that when they receive data from the woman, especially when it comes to vulnerable feelings, he feels like he has to fix it because as a man, he's brought up to fix problems, including emotions. So men haven't been taught how to be in that pose of consciousness and listening and hearing what their woman has to say. So because they're not taught how to do that, that's where the woman has to give the direction to say, you know, I have a lot of things coming up for me right now. This is what I want to share. There's a part of me that has this voice and that voice. Would it be okay if you just held space for me and, and not, not have to, um, you know, think of a solution. I just want to process out loud and, and just get your thoughts on things. You know, if, if it comes to that, would you be okay with holding space for me? And oftentimes they'll be like, oh, that's all I have to do. I don't think I have to fix anything. I just have to hold space. Yeah. So holding space is in that masculine energy. And then sharing emotions is in feminine energy. So this is where the polarization happens. When, when, when a woman feels heard and when a woman just feels so safe to crack her heart open from an energy of, of, of the heart, not from the head, not being like, oh my God, she's so in her head. No, you got to drop into your heart and feel your emotions and, and perhaps even have some cracks in your voice. A lot of times when I have left voice notes for men, afterwards I get the feedback like, oh my gosh, that was so beautiful. They couldn't get enough of it because I'm speaking my truth from my heart. And yes, some of these voice notes did contain te tears. And that's coming from feminine energy. Men want to hear that cracked open heart. That's really just the rawness of emotions that many of them are not able to feel on their own, but to witness it in another person. It's, it's just one of the most beautiful things for them to hear. Ladies, so it's so important to maintain that sexual attraction that we do our part to be in our heart and share our most vulnerable feelings with our man. We have to give direction to the man on how to hold space while we share our deepest truth. And men, if you want to keep that sexual tension alive and have lots of great sex, because I know that that's one of the primary things you want, it is very important for you to make her feel safe emotionally so that she could share her deepest truth. Making her feel safe also means not judging what she, what she says. Just like this guy, Steve did not judge anything. I said, he wanted to hold space for whatever it was I was feeling towards him, including the part of me that wasn't even sure if I wanted to, uh, you know, keep dating him in the way that he wanted us to date. He creating that safety of basically saying, I gotcha, whatever you're feeling, I gotcha. And I'm not going to judge you. That energy just created even more safety within me to want to move forward. That kept the polarity of the masculine and the feminine. And that's what creates the tension and the lifelong passion and aliveness. So I hope that this video has helped you to understand the psychology of sexual attraction and what it is um, you must do in order to create that polarity. And one of the most important things is for women to get out of their head and into their hearts. In this story I shared with the other woman who couldn't get into her heart and it, it just didn't create the sexual attraction that was necessary for Steve to keep dating her. So I was a complete contrast to how this woman showed up. Uh, so this is why with me sharing my vulnerable heart and my feelings, it created the polarity between us where it became that juicy aliveness of, of, you know, erotic tension that needed to happen in order for the dating experience to continue. If you like the depth of how I cover the psychology of sexual attraction and what goes on in relationships, I invite you to subscribe so that you keep getting the content. I'm going to keep sharing on the depth of how to get epic intimacy, right? So please subscribe and share this with your friends and also comment below 
on whether or not you've been able to create this kind of sexual tension in your relationships. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask them in the comments too. I would be more than happy to answer them for you. Thanks for watching.